I hate to break it to you, cap rates are fake. It's still real to me, damn it! <laughs> fake as they may be, they can still be useful, at least to a certain extent. It's exaggerated, but they can be used. But you have bit, to understand sometimes. exactly why they're fake and how to use them. I'm Andrew, this is Philip, we're the Sirius Brothers. We've used cap rates on buying several larger apartment complexes. They have their purpose. Now what a cap rate is for the noobs, for the noobs out there that need to learn what, what a cap rate is, it's very simple. It's just you take your net operating income, basically how much money you made after all of your expenses, and then you divide by that by the total price, the purchase price, which will rehab, whatever you're all into the property for, and that is your cap rate. It will be 0 0.06, 0 0.08, you make that a percentage if you want. Not a percentage, but like it would be a percentage, but it should be a percentage. You turn it into a number. You turn it into a number. number. It's, it should yes. be a percentage, but they turn it into so a like number. It, you know, it has a six cap rate, is kind of what you say. You I'm know. probably confusing you, but that's okay. So an 8% would be an eight cap. Uh, the property's trading at an eight cap. That means that its purchase price, if you multiplied it by 0 0.08, it would equal the uh, amount of income it brought in. If it brought in a certain amount of income and it was trading at an eight cap, you you uh, you divide that by point. The way I found this to be purchase price. most useful is to figure out what should the purchase price be if this is trading at an eight cap. That changes what the purchase yeah. price should be. Or you know if it's going to trade at a seven cap, it just changes the purchase the, price. That's the best way. The reason out that how to a cap it. rate is useful is because when, when you're comparing houses, when you're looking for houses to buy, or you, you just compare it to the nearby closest houses you can find. You try to find the absolute most comparable, most similar property that sold very recent and is very nearby. Unfortunately, with apartments and commercial properties and industrial properties, you generally don't have that. You have a 50-unit apartment with 32 beds and two, uh, 21 bedrooms uh, that the tenants pay the utilities for, and then down the road a mile is a 80-unit apartment with 61 beds and 22s, and, and the tenants don't, you know, the owner pays the uh, utilities, and there's, and you know, one is, you know, there's, there's so many differences in there that oh. you don't have that 50-unit apartment that's very, or very similar to yours to compare it to. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to basically say, if these trade at an eight cap in this area, in this type of asset class, what should the price yeah. be? So if this trades at a six cap in this area, what should the price be? And so that's how you kind of compare You boil things. it down like you have two, you know, apartments that are of a approximate age, approximate quality, you know, an A class, a B class. You can compare apartments that aren't that similar but are kind of, they're in the ballpark to each other and you can kind of boil it down to one number. Based so these, the income. These yeah. apartments, are of similar quality. That's all you know. They're different sizes. They all these other, other different things. So this is what their income is, and we're gonna you know you basically so, you're making eight percent on your money if you have no loan. That's an eight cap. They take the loan out because your debt structure shouldn't affect how good the property is. So that's what you're making if you have no loan. You get eight percent a year at least to start with, and so that that's why that's why it's it's useful and. Boiling it all down to that simple and number, but the problem is when you boil it all down to a very simple number, you usually oversimplify. Yeah, and for apartments, it's a little more useful because you can use a lot of generalities and averages and things like that. Uh, that still doesn't work, but we've bought over 300 houses at mm -hmm. this point, and people would say, oh, what cap rate are you trying to buy your houses at? And I'm like, it's, it's pointless to talk about that. If our water heater breaks in a house, it changes the cap rate by like 100 points. It's insane. Like... Basically, what are you ca ca uh, categorizing as a capital expense versus operating expense, and all these little things that's probably been vacant you, for too long? It totally changes yeah, the average. Yeah, you can you properties. can estimate it, a, a house will be vacant ten percent of the time, but usually it'll be like okay for four years in a row it's hundred percent occupied, and then you're it's vacant for and three upgrade. four months, and you have a huge turnover expenses, and so your expenses are very variable. It's very difficult to Especially get an eye on. It's not like a single family yeah. house. It just the, you know the numbers are so yeah. big I mean, for the overall. It's, it's statistics the law of big numbers. When you have yeah. a large number of units of, of of inventory or whatever, then it all kind of regresses towards the mean. Yeah. But when you have one unit, one number, it can be all over the place. And thereby it's very hard to come up with these estimates. And it just sort of becomes a number that is thrown out there and you see these wholesalers sending out, hey, 25% cap rate or whatever. Yeah, it's just nonsense. They're just numbers. Well, it's just marketing. It, here's another thing. I mean, does management matter in real estate? Management does property matters. management matter at all? Like, do you have a good manager versus a bad manager? Does that change anything? Well, yes, it does. A good manager will bring more income. A bad manager, by definition, will bring in less yeah. income. That changes the cap rate. So, but they sell these cap rates as this is just the return on this so, investment, which it doesn't yeah, make any sense. So when, when you're looking at apartments or larger commercial properties where cap rates tend to 
to make sense versus like a house More or duplex sense, yes. where they don't make any sense. Yes, you're not going to compare a, a property, you know, a 100 unit apartment that's 40% occupied and is in complete disrepair and needs to be repositioned to a 100 unit apartment that is, you know, humming along. But even still, there's a lot of gradations there. A 100 unit apartment that is 93% occupied and has got really good management and they're, they're getting that rent and they're, they're pushing the rent price up versus one that's lackadaisically going along. Maybe they're 87% occupied. It's kind of in the ballpark, but they're not. They're, you know, they're just like, okay, we want to just keep it full, so we don't care. Like, we're not going to push the rents that hard. You can't, you know, you can do a market analysis and figure out what the rents should be. But if you just take what they have, that, you know, that property doesn't perform as well. Another major issue is what are they including in their expenses? And so if you've got, you've got capital expenses, you've got operating expenses. Capital expenses don't go on your operating statement. They just go on the balance sheet. This is stuff like your roof, your park, you know, repaving your parking lot. The operating expenses, like just maintenance and, and you know taxes and insurance, these go on your operating uh, statement as a annual expense. They're not a one-time major expense. Well, it's it's a little bit it's a little bit of a gray area. What's included yes, on very this much so. And so basically, capital expenses don't affect your 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 cap rate. Now they, they should in theory you have recur like when we do an analysis we put in recurring capex or a replacement reserve. Although a lot of people yeah. don't do that. Now a lot of people do that because you know a roof is if you own a property for thirty years your roof will go yes. out. You need to assume that that's an and it's going to affect yeah. the return of the property. So it's not an annual expense, but it is an expense oh, an expense you're going to have holding the property for a long time. But you have property owners that include you know replacing a refrigerator or the carpet or repainting a unit. These things they consider capital expenses. You can make the case that they are. But if they're including none of that in their operating expenses, it's not really a realistic look at what that property is going to trade for. If you're just looking at the MLS or CoStar properties that have sold, they go, oh, this one's sold for an eight cap given the operating income that that's listed in their offering memorandum. Well, I mean, were they including, you know, did they, were they, were they including every little thing as CapEx that you could possibly get away with pushing? Are they including replacing the carpet and painting units as, as capital expenses, even though these are recurring turnover expenses? I've seen that a lot. And so it's yeah. like, and they, they, mar they yeah. affect what the return is, which mm -hmm. is the income, which is the cap rate of the property. Yeah. So you can adjust the cap rate by just changing what or you they, capitalize they could on just these properties. Be, like really pushing the edge of being honest in general. I mean, I've or seen they're it. just not repairing things, and yeah, or okay. they have terrible accounting. That's you see that That's too. So, or you know, they're they're letting mm -hmm. things you know get in disrepair. You have a lot of deferred maintenance now. Cap rates are supposed to account for that by age of property, but age of property does not yeah, mean well, condition I mean, the, of property. Yeah, generally A, B, C, D. But if you have a hundred year apartment that's been completely renovated, then it's not. They, they try to account for this yeah. stuff when they're comparing, but it, it's not. Yeah, it, apples. There's to apples other little things. things. High the, the high pop tenants, which sometimes. Uh, uh, large uh, institutional investors try to get, which is basically they're going, they're trying to inc get the rent as high as possible, and they're sacrificing screening for that because it looks yeah. better on a performa. And these are all issues that you need to realize that you, you trying to boil this down to one number, it's just too muddy to do that. Yeah. You also look at one of the best things about apartments and, and commercial properties over houses or a small small du you know, duplexes and whatnot is value add opportunities, the ability to force appreciation. If you have a house and you increase the rent $100, I hate to break this to you, that house is worth exactly the same. Nobody cares. <laughs> I, they just don't. I mean, because they're it's weird, but it's it, true. They're just comparing it to what other houses in that area go for. And you also, if you're above the lower end of the market, you're, you're competing with homeowners too. Yeah. With apartments, it boils down to this fake-ish number and so if you can increase the net operating income, that means that, and you're selling, like if you have, you're selling an area to six cap and you increase the net operating income by $100,000, you know, $100,000 by, by, by 0.6, I'm not doing this math, it's a lot, but you made a lot of money, you forced it. So you have the ability to add value. But if you're just looking at these apartments on CoStar and MLS, how much research are you gonna have to do to figure out how yeah. much value add is left in this property or where, where, where did it stand? Like where was it to stand to begin with? So. There's a lot of questions there that aren't particularly easy to answer, particularly if you're just looking at, you know, you're looking at various listings or old memorandums or even driving by them or even even shopping them and going in. We're looking at comparables. Just taking that number 
that cap rate that is, you know, it's operating income, it's sale price, the cap rate it's sold at, and then be like, okay, well, I got to get mine, this apartment at this cap rate because that equals that one. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of blurriness and, and muddiness. And so remember, they say all buyers are liars. All sellers are liars too. Don't trust the numbers you're given of what this cap rate of this property is going to be. Cap rates are best when you're analyzing your own evaluations mm -hmm. and your own history of what you know how these things to, to try to make somewhat like to like, mm -hmm. really close to like to like. There, you have to use your own numbers to do that. There, there's a lot of subjectivity here. And yes. you, you want to, when you're doing your due diligence on an apartment complex, you want to dig into their numbers and make sure they're realistic. You want to do a market analysis, uh, a market survey, even calling up apartments, seeing what their occupancy is, what what they're renting for, etc. You want to you want to check all of those things and make sure that you have a very good picture of how much this property will cash flow, and how much uh, and and what you want it to hit. You should have a a goal of a cash flow number, a goal of a cash on cash number, basically your cash flow divided by the amount of cash you have into it. You should have, these are like if you read Brandon Turner's book or, or um, Joe Fairless's book, both of them talk about how important this cash on cash number is. Because, and part of it is because cap rates are very, very vague. They're very, they're very, they're subjective. They are more subjective than than the numbers guys want to admit. And yes. you, while you should look at the comparable sales, you should look at their cap rates. You need to take a major grain of salt in, in, into that equation because there's just so much blurriness. There's so many different definitions. There's so many questions about management quality. And you then, can't just use it as a flat number no. to take. And when you're We're buying at a six cap, that doesn't mean And anything. when you're buying houses, they just it's completely just, the way I, I think the best way to think about it is it's a good metric to use and understand it's a terrible metric to trust and just yeah. assume this number works. Yeah, it's so. a good, helpful, you should look at it, it's kind of a piece of the analysis, but they're just way too fake to be the cornerstone of your analysis. Now, it's not the only thing that's fake. No, there's a lot of fakeness out there. Performance, they're also fake, and you should listen to this video here, watch this video, watch this video, and or listen, listen to, to it. it, either you one. You can listen to it, that's and fine. And subscribe to the channel. Subscribe watch to the, the channel, video. watch the video, and you can understand why basically everything in real estate and also the world is fake all they've done is lie to you for your entire life.